and being in worship on this Advent for Sunday, where we focus in on love. I'd invite you to center yourself, take a breath in and out. Remember the beloved earth below you that is supporting you and all of us in community as we engage our worship of God, the creator this day in the light of Mary and Joseph and Jesus and all who gather today uh, to announce new birth, angelic choirs and all. Remember the earth, remember each other, and we are inviting Tom to start us off with a prelude this morning. Thank you, Tom. Amen and good morning once again. Welcome to Church of the Covenant. Peace be with you. Yes. Yeah. Friends, this morning we're going to call attention to some art which has carried us through this Advent season. If you have been paying attention, you will have seen that our bulletin covers have been handmade this year in an incredibly prophetic, joyful, uh, earth-friendly way. So I'm going to invite um, our artist in residence, our artists in formation uh, through this congregation, none other than E.J. Houston, to uh, give us a moment of introduction for the way that they have created this art. 
Hello, Covenant community. If you don't know me, my name is E.J. Houston, formerly Eva Houston, and I grew up there. Many happy memories. To tell you a little bit about my collage process, in January of this year, I and my work as an art therapist prepared a project for my clients that combined abstract collage with found poetry. And I totally fell in love with it. I felt like I had wandered through a secret portal into a realm of pure creativity. It's such a cool medium because it's so accessible. By making intuitive decisions about color, texture, shape, composition, and words, it all adds up to being like a message in its own whole language. I would also say it is a magical alchemical process because the elements you choose react to each other depending on how you juxtapose them. It's such a responsive, alive medium. It is also like alchemy because you create something precious using basically trash. Anyway, for this four weeks of Advent project, I started by brainstorming words associated with the four themes, found them in my paper ephemera, and cut them out, hunted for colors and textures that I felt expressed the themes, and intuitively composed them. I had the shape of a dove in my mind making the piece one, but most people think it looks like a boat. What did you see? That's another cool thing about this medium and all art. It speaks to each person differently. Thanks for listening, and why not try it yourself sometime? We show some love to EJ. Uh, unbelievable, and even a challenge, right, for us to try it someday. I love that. Don't just uh, speak about the art, but invite others to, to go create. So with that spirit of creation, of co-creativity, uh, uh, of bringing things to life that maybe other people have neglected or thought were useless trash. I, I'd invite us to continue now in this spirit of, of worship today. I'd invite us to call ourselves into worship as is printed in your bulletin. Again, if you feel like it, you can unmute or you can stay muted as we uh, lead us in this call to worship as is printed. As we come to the end of Advent, we wait for love to arrive. While we prepare our hearts for Christmas, we tell and retell about the time God with us showed up in the world as a baby. With Mary and Joseph, we say yes to God's invitation. With the innkeepers and animals, we make room for the ones who have no place to sleep. With the shepherds, we're a little bit afraid. With the angels, we sing glory to God in the highest. With all creation, we wait in hope, peace, and joy. We wait for love to arrive. And now we'd invite Christine to join us. I'll invite you forward, um, and um, you can lead us in the lighting of our fourth Advent candle. Good morning, everyone. And excuse my um, croaky voice, please. Um, so today I'm going to light the Advent candle of love, the blue candle. And even at a at the end of a year that's been marked by so much horror and hatred, I see the love of God everywhere I look for it. I see it in the courage and determination of doctors and nurses and medics to care for the injured and sick and traumatized in war zones from Ukraine to Gaza regardless of the risk to themselves. I see it in elders who are using their time and wisdom and financial power to stand up to fossil fuel companies and the banks and governments and investors that support them in order to leave a safer, healthier future for their grandchildren. I see it in young adults who as children routinely participated in active shooter drills and too often lost friends, family members and teachers in school shootings running for office so they can finally, finally help end the era of mass shootings. I see it in the aid workers who bring water and food and clothing and shelter to those displaced by devastating storms, wildfires, earthquakes, and other natural disasters, despite the real danger to their own safety. And closer to home, I see it in messages of concern and of celebration that we offer each other every Sunday. I believe there is full as much love in the world as its opposite. And I believe that should we decide to follow the example of the infant 
born in that humble major some 2,023 years ago, we would see that love manifest more and more in the coming year. For after all, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Mm. Amen. Let us all light our candles. Mm. Now our opening hymn, focused in on love, people look east. People look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love, the guest is on the way. Friends, as we look east and we sing loudly in our hearts and in our souls that God is on the way, please join me in a prayer for grounding in God's grace. Pray with me. God, God of God. time and space, we need you here and now. All creation cries out for justice and healing. 
Your children struggle in a world of violence and oppression. The grief of the world and the power of evil seems so big. Sometimes the magic of Christmas and the hope of the Christ child seem really far away. Come into our world with comfort and reconciliation. Let us be reborn in love. Now let us listen to God in silent prayer. Friends, when night is longest, a new light dawns. God will give us a sign. Look, the young woman is with child. She shall name her baby Emmanuel, God with us. In Jesus Christ, we are set free and made whole. Alleluia and amen. Today's Gospel reading is from Luke, chapter 1, starting at verse 46, Mary's Magnificat. And Mary said, My soul magnifies you, holy God, and my spirit rejoices in you, my Savior, for you have looked with favor on the lowliness of a servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For you, O mighty one, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. Your mercy is for those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength in your arm. You have scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. You have brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have helped your servant Israel in remembrance of your mercy, according to the promise you made to our ancestors, to Abraham, Sarah, Hagar, and to all descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Holy One had shown great mercy to her and they rejoiced with her. God is still speaking the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be. be to God. In keeping with Advent 4, um, we Sorry, will now Joshua. have... Yes. We're going to play one song in addition here. Um, oh, okay. That's all right. Uh, to contemplate a little bit further on this Magnificat, uh, we want to share one that we know well, but also with some images perhaps that uh, can center us. We thank um, the Community of Christ in Montreal uh, for this, this offering. Choir Beyond Walls. <laughs> My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great, and 
my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to fight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. simple and profound and hard as that. Mary in the face of the injustices of our world and the longing for the love that Christine so powerfully lit that candle around, her response was a song. May we sing. Okay, now we can move on, Joshua. At this moment, we will have our call to offering. There, If there's not already a link in the chat, one will be placed there very shortly for um, those who wish to give online. If not, I believe many of you all know the address to the church. You can also send, uh, send your offering that way as well. So at this moment, um, for our offering, I'll invite Tom. Um, to lead us in the musical offering.
God for all that love has done. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, one. Emmanuel, Creator, Sustainer, Redeemer, we ask that you take our offerings, no matter the size, large, small, or medium, we ask that you take that which we have given. You place them in your hands with the expectation that in the future, you will do something that will blow our minds with it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, friends, I'd invite you, uh, it may have been a while, uh, like me, but I'd invite you to put on your skates. Uh, you know how hard it is to like unlace them and like get them on, they're cold, your toes are cold, put them on, follow Linus and Lucy, and just let's get out there, let's skate. Thank you, Tom, for that imagery of that, uh, of that carefree, but also that community, right? Uh, skating around on life that is sometimes slippery. I think that's a great image for, for prayer. As we come together into this moment, I'd invite us to, to, to share with one another in the spirit of um, the promise of a God who listens and prays with us and prepares the way, even as we continue to wait in expectation of what may be born into our world. So what do we pray uh, to that one God creator here before uh, community, within community of this day with our skates on? If you have a prayer, just go ahead and raise your hand um, and we'll invite you to unmute and we'll pray with you. The prayer response, uh, the invitation is God in your grace and the response of prayer is receive our prayer. And you can also put them into the chat uh, as we share. Wendy, I invite you to unmute. I am so grateful for this church. We all say that, but I also want to say it again. The message of joy and profundity and images, it's not just any routine church service. It is something that reaches us in the innermost being. Thank you. We amplify that, God, in your grace receive our prayer. Trudy, go ahead and unmute. Yeah, I I would like to ask for prayers for uh, my husband, Bob. He um, is struggling with um, dry eye um, situation so much so that it really makes it hard for him to open his eyes. Certainly the several hours in the morning it's very painful um and um so he has now some medication and i hope that it will improve for him um but related to that because on thursday on the day of the sources i had to take him to his eye exam i wasn't able to join you on the uh the solstice surface at the river and and I just want to say just how a little blessing of solstice came my way, because while we were driving back in a traffic jam along Route 117, and it was like quarter to five, and the dying sun was shining on the lake just to the left of the road, it was the most beautiful view. of, of just the sun going down and the light. You know, it lasted probably a few minutes but just by then we were driving by there and 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 at that time i just felt like oh there's the solstice that i could experience so also thanks for finding these joys amid illness and problems mm. and traffic jams thank you trudy for the prayer and we pray for bob and the ability to see sunset solstice is even in the midst of hard times god in your grace receive our prayer uh, uh karen i had visitors this is a celebration uh i had visitors my niece and her husband were here and diane had sent me 
and some others, a um, do-it-yourself solstice celebration kit. And I shared it with them. And one of the acts was to write down all the things you want to let go of in the, in the, you know, this year and then burn them. <laughs> and then another part of the ceremony was to take uh, milkweed seeds and spread them and talk and uh, cry out what you're grateful for. And so we did that together and it was such a wonderful way to celebrate the solstice. So I thank Diane who's on the phone there. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, want to celebrate all, all who could, could celebrate the solstice. Mm. Thank you, Karen, for those images and that lifting and letting go. God, in your grace, receive, receive our prayer. Our prayer. Uh, Christine James. Hi again. Sorry for the croak. Um, I just wanted to say thank you uh, to everyone who's been reaching out and praying for my brother uh, who had a stroke earlier this month. And he's doing, um, besides my weeping, <laughs> he's doing he's doing quite well. He's home for Christmas, which is great and has a road ahead of him in terms of PT and OT and speech therapy, but um, he's doing well. And for my sister who lost her husband um, earlier again this month as well, um, she also has a church community that is very supportive of her over in Maine. And so I'm grateful for that. And I'm just grateful to all of you for all of your expressions of concern. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We continue to pray with you, Christine, for your beloved family and for the families of faith that carry us. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Uh, Anita. I wanted to um, offer some prayers for Evelyn and for any other members of the families and congregation who are in the hospital during these holiday times and for the people that are there uh, to help them. With Anita, we pray for Evelyn, for all who are in hospitals, for all who are facing new diagnoses, and for all of those who are caring in solidarity with those who are facing health challenges. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Joshua, do we see anything in the chat? Oh, Barbara. I see Barbara. Okay, <laughs> there's Barbara. All right. If anyone has anything to put in the chat, you can do so now as well. Go ahead. I'd Barbara. like to ask for prayers for two neighbors, Hank and Elaine. Hank had a head-on collision and Elaine had a fall. And I'd like to ask for prayers for both of them, as well as continuing prayers for my former student, Gilda, who lost her 39-year-old boyfriend so tragically. With Barbara, we pray for Hank and Elaine for recovery in that trauma and for Gilda for accompaniment in this deep grief. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Karen has in the chat that at this time of the year, we continue our prayers for the people of Doce Nombre and our friends in Entre Culturas. God, in your grace, receive our, our prayer. prayer. And that is it for the chat. Mm -hmm. Faith. I thought I'd put this in the chat. Um, Alan, Alan Lane is now home from the hospital after his surgery on Tuesday. Uh, and he is grateful for the continuing prayers of people of covenant. Great. Thank you for sharing that faith. And we continue to pray for Alan and his continued and ongoing recovery. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Anyone else that I have unintentionally missed? I'd like to ask a prayer for my beloved aunt, Anne McKay, who um, had some, some um, spinal stenosis surgery a week ago and uh, went home the same day and the next day was in severe pain. So went back to the hospital and sadly still been in the hospital um, since. She's doing much better. The pain's under control, but it's a, it's a big recovery. So prayers for Anne uh, in her recovery and all those at New England Baptist who are such amazing caregivers and um, health experts. God, in your grace. Receive our prayer. Healers was the word. 
the old word that we are reclaiming these days, right? The healers among us. Friends, I thank you for sharing these prayers, knowing that there are others that go with us in our hearts. And um, I wanted to, to, this may be a little clunky, but I'm gonna share one more video um, to just remember, um, just remember, it's complex, but there are people, there are Christians who are, um, who are calling for peace. And I just wanted to give this sound bite uh, for here. Let's see if this comes through. Um, yes, let's see if this comes through. Friends, would you close with me in a word of prayer? Holy and loving God, we know that our world knows too much war and violence and division and hatred and fear. And it's not a new thing. It's the very world that you, Jesus, were born into from the fears of Mary and the uncertainties of Joseph in the midst of occupation and empire, you came and did not leave us alone. We thank you for that profound promise. And we ask that the peacemakers of this world, who are the vast majority, would know what to say, how to say it, how to be in solidarity, and leave no one out for everyone is precious in you. All of us matter. We pray for the prayers that we have lifted this day in solidarity, in deep trust of one another in the holding of the things that hold us we give you thanks for this community and all communities of faith we pray for everyone gathering on this sacred day the sacred night around this your world in bethlehem and khartoum in boston and beyond we pray that there would be light that shines in the midst of the gloom we pray that we would all live into that love and see those who are helping see uh, those things that do not rise beyond the headlines that we would look and focus in on the helpers and be those helpers for a world in need. We thank you for the promises uh, and the love that holds each and every one of us made in your beloved image. We thank you for our time together. We pray that you would send us out into the rest of this day into this uh, Advent that is turning into Christmas Eve in the spirit of Christ among us, born once again in our midst. In that name we pray. Amen. Friends, our benediction today is simply in the spirit of Mary to sing. And now I invite everybody to unmute yourselves as we prepare to exchange the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace be with you all. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Peace.